Hi everyone, in this video we'll learn how to filter data by using Python and Pandas. What I'll do first is I'm going to install Pandas. I'm going to do this within my Jupyter cell, so I need an exclamation point pip install Pandas. You can also run this in the command line by just typing in pip install Pandas. Once we have it installed, then I'm going to import Pandas as PD. Now that we have the module imported, I'm going to load in data from NASA, and this is on meteorite landings. And I'm going to load the data into a data frame, and this is going to save our data into tabular format, similar to what you would see in an Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to first name our data frame DF. Then I'm going to call pandas, so PD. Then I'm going to read the CSV file. Finally, what we are going to do is we need to import the file name, and it's meteoritelandings.csv. We can now take a look at our data frame in the cell. I'm going to call it df. And we can see that we have our data. We can see that we have roughly 450,000 rows and 10 columns. And within the columns, I'll point out a few, the name of the meteorite. We can see the estimated size of it, whether the meteorite fell to the ground or if it was just found. And then we have the geolocation. So this is the latitude and longitude of where the meteorite has fallen or where it is estimated where it will fall. What I want to do first is I want to filter by a single point. We can see we have the years where the meteorite was found. What I want to do is I want to filter down to just a single year. So I want to look at all the records where meteorites were found in 1880. The way that we'll do this is I am going to create a new data frame. It's better to create a new data frame for our filtered data than to overwrite our current data frame. What we'll do is we'll create a new data frame. I'll call it DF single point. Next, what I'm going to call is the data frame DF. This is our main data frame. Then I'm going to put brackets around it. After that, I am going to call df again, and what I want to do is I want to hone in on the year column. Now that we have that, we can put in our condition. And if I want to get all the years in 1880, I'm going to put the double equal sign operator. This is going to check across all the rows to see if the year is 1880. And I need to specify 1880 here. Once we run it, we can take a look at our data frame. And we can see that within our data frame, we were able to filter down to all the times in 1880 where a meteorite was found. Next, what we'll do is we're going to look for meteorites in a range of years. The way that we'll do that is I'm going to create another, very, another data frame called DF year range. Again, I'm going to call the data frame DF and then DF year again, like we did for our single point. This time I am going to find every meteorite that was found not from 1950 onwards. The way that we'll do that is we're going to say if it's greater than or equal to 1950, then we want to filter for it in our data frame. Let's run this and take a look at the data frame. And once we do, we'll see that we have all these various years. We can see 1951, 1976, we can also do this by, we can double check by sorting our values. So I'm going to sort values. This is another built-in function for our data frame. Then I'm going to say by, and I want to sort this by year. And we can see that the first year that we have is 1950. And this goes all the way to, this might be an error. It says 2101. So we have it going from 1950 to 2013. What we could do is we can also sort in between a range of values. And I'm going to call this data frame DF between. Like before, we're going to call the main data frame DF. We're going to call our brackets. This time I am going to put a parentheses and I'm going to say DF year. And I'm going to say greater than and or equal to 1950. We want to include all those. Then I'm going to add another condition where I want to just go up to 1999. This time we need to put the ampersand operator. So we want to put the ampersand. We don't want to type out and, otherwise this will not work. So I'll take this, paste it here, and then I'll go less than or equal to 1999. 
we can again take a look at those values and we can sort them by year. We can see that we were able to capture all the meteorites that were spotted from 1950 all the way up to 1999. We can also see in our data frame that we have some null values, meaning there is no data point here. We can easily filter out these values as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call our main data frame DF and sort values again. This time I am going to sort the values by geolocation. We can see that we have a bunch of different rows that don't have a value for geolocation. If we want to get rid of all these rows where we have missing geolocation points, we can do this with the drop function or drop NA. So I'm going to create another data frame. I'll call it DFGeo. And then I'm going to call the data frame DF and drop NA. What I want to do is I want to drop it by a certain subset. So in this case, we have to input a list of columns the only column I'm going to drop on is going to be the geolocation. Then what I want to do is I also just want to sort this. So I'll sort values and we'll sort it by geolocation again. We can take a look and we can see that we were able to get rid of the null values that were at the bottom of our data frame. We can also see if we compare the number of rows, we have 380, 38,401 rows. Here we have 45,716 rows. And that is the amount of null values that were dropped in the geolocation column. What we'll do next is we're going to filter out by a specified value. We're going to call it D DFGO again. This time I am going to use the built in function value counts. And what this does is it sums up all of the values within a specified column, in this case, geolocation, and it gives us the totals. Let's run this. We can see that for a lot of the points, we have this 0 0.0, 0 0.0 for the latitude and longitude. And these are most likely akin to null values. So this information is either incorrect or it's a placeholder. And I want to get rid of these values as well from our data frame. What I'm going to do is I am going to get the values and I'll explain what I do here. In this case, what I'm doing is I am accessing the value here, 0, 0.0, because what this, the value counts returns is a panda series and the latitude and longitude are the index for this series. So I am returning the top index value and it's 0, 0.0, and I'm also checking the data type. So this looks like a tuple when I print it out, but when we check the data type, we can see it's a string. So when I filter out, I need to specify that this is a string. The way that we'll do this is I'm going to create another data frame, I'll call it DFGO2. And then I am going to filter. From here, I am going to say not equals. The way that we say that is with an exclamation point and an equal sign. And I want to specify it's this 0, 0.0. I need to specify this as a string too, because if we enter it as a tuple, we won't be able to filter it out. So we have it here. Then I need to put it in between quotation marks so it actually filters out. Let's run this. Then let's take a look at the value counts for DFGO2. When we compare the values here, we can see that we were able to filter out the 0, 0.0 from our data frame. Next, we're going to filter for columns by using the built-in filter function. We can see if we go up and look at this data frame, I might not want to keep all of these columns. So we can just filter down to the columns that we want. In this case, I want to filter down to the name, the mass of the meteorite, the year it was spotted, and the geolocation. If we go back down, the way that we could do this is I am going to create a list called calls, and I am going to input the strings for each of those columns. Next, what I'm going to do is I am going to create a, another data frame. And this time I'll call it DF calls. We're going to call df.filter. Then we are going to input the items that we want to filter down to. In this case, items is going to be equal to our calls list. And I also want to specify access is equal to one. 
When we specify axis is equal to one, we're saying that we want to filter on the columns. If we were filtering on rows, we would put axis is equal to zero. And let's take a look at our columns. We can see that we were able to filter down to just the columns that are relevant for us. Let's take a look now how to filter down for the rows. In this case, I want to get the first 15 rows. I'll call a variable rows and I am going to create a list. I'll use list comprehension to get the values zero to 14. Now that I have my rows list, I'm going to call DF rows as our new data frame. And we're going to use the filter function again. I'll take this and I am going to paste it here. The only thing I'll do is I'm going to put in rows for our items and I need to specify, specify our axis is equal to zero because we're filtering on the rows. And if we take a look, we can see that we have the first 15 rows going from zero to 14 within our pandas data frame. Another way that we can filter on the rows and columns is by using the lock or the loc function, depending on how you call it. The way that we do this is we're going to call the data frame again. I am going to also create a new data frame. I'll call it df rows calls. I'll call the df, the data frame, and then I'm going to call lock. First, I need to specify the rows, and we have these saved in our list already, so I'll combine the rows and columns that we saved beforehand. So we're going to input the rows column, the rows that we want to filter on, then we want to put in the columns. And we can take this and take a look at it. We can see that we were able to filter down to both the columns and rows that we want to with the lock function. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope that this video was helpful. I included documentation for pandas. If you want to learn how to filter by using the filter function, the lock or look function, or just pandas in general, I highly recommend checking out the documentation website. If you like the video, feel free to like and subscribe. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn, Twitter, GitHub, Medium, and Odyssey. Thanks again everyone for watching and happy coding.